How's it going tonight, YouTube? All right. So for your face balls tonight, obviously, we have a QSP knife. Um, I generally don't show packaging, but uh, this one here was kind of cool, so I thought I would show it off, especially for the money, and we'll kind of get into that in a little bit. But uh, for those of you that don't know, uh, QSP, these knives are uh, made in China, uh, but they're coming out with some pretty, pretty interesting designs. So you can see here uh, the packaging, and, you know, it's uh, really kind of high-end, pretty pretty sturdy cardboard, but it's like a little uh, drawer affair here. And you get kind of a nice uh, nylon pouch, zipper pouch. <clears throat> and they also give you a microfiber cloth. And then you also get this uh, card here. It's got some information on the back here, a little QR code for your QSP. And gives you some information on the front here. So as you can see, we're going to be taking a look at the uh, QSP Pelican. And there's some dimension, uh, which actually, uh, real world measurements are slightly different than this uh, card shows here. But uh, anyway, so let's take a look at the knife here. Get this crap out of the way. So... Got a nice little zipper pouch, and inside of the pouch is a nylon. It doesn't have the fur, and then, of course, it just comes in a plastic bag there. So, you know, kind of a nice little pouch. Not a bad setup. All right. So, here is the uh, QSP Pelican. And uh, so, <clears throat> I guess to start off here, we'll, we'll get the uh, standard uh, size comparisons out of the way. Here is the uh, pair of three lightweight. And here is the uh, Manix 2, which this, the Manix 2 is actually a pretty interesting uh, size comparison. The uh, handle dimensions on the Manix and the, uh, the uh, Pelican are identical, but the uh, Pelican is uh, packaged a little bit better. So I'll show you that here in a second. And here is a little bit larger knife, uh, the 8015, for any of you guys out there that have that knife. And then, uh, yeah, we got, oh, one more here. And this here is a uh, another micarta knife, but this happens to be also a Chinese knife. This is the uh, Stat Gear Asus, uh, or Asus. Uh, this one actually is kind of modified a little bit. I... Did a forward finger choil and then also completely changed the pocket clip and reprofiled it and made it shorter and made it usable because uh, originally this thing sucked real bad. Oh, and I also weight relieved this backspacer a ton. That backspacer weighed like two ounces. So anyway, made this knife usable. So for a cheap budget knife, it's kind of a cool one. I like my Carta. So anyway, uh, on these two guys here, you can see that the overall handle length is actually, I mean, it's identical. It's absolutely identical. I don't know how well that comes across, but um, yeah, handle length, if we line them up pivot to pivot, uh, they are, handle lengths are absolutely identical in every way. However, you can see here, you have a, a large difference in blade. Um, and not only that, you know, because of the Manix and that forward finger choil, you get a lot more cutting length uh, with the old Pelican here. So, all right, well, so that should do it for size comparison. So what we're actually looking at here, we're looking at an overall length of 8 and 3 eighths inches. <clears throat> You've got a uh, blade length of 3.725, uh, so just a hair under 3 and 3 quarter. And you've got a uh, cutting length of right at three and a half inches, just a just a tiny bit under three and a half inches in cutting length. Uh, the handle length here <clears throat> is uh, four and five eighths. And as you can see here, we've got uh, micarta scales. I, they actually call it laminated flax, uh, but it uh, you know performs and feels just like carbon fiber. Or I'm. Good lord, guys, been a long day, I guess. Uh, not carbon fiber, micarta. <laughs> so, <clears throat> anyway, uh, they did do a nice job. This is a, a saber flat grind. Uh, you can see on these uh, black flats up here. Um, 
and then you've got your your grind there that's sat and finished. Uh, the grind lines on this are, are done extremely well and uh, it, it's fairly thin behind the edge. Uh, so from you know on this Warncliffe style blade here uh, I measured anywhere from from 19 to 21 thousandths so it's it's uh, close to that 21 back here and it actually thins out towards the tip so so yeah really nicely done you know it's a it's an effective cutter and uh, yeah it's a it's a pretty nice knife um, <clears throat> so handle wise we're looking at uh, stainless steel liners and you can see I don't know if you can tell in there but they are skeletonized and I will disassemble this uh, towards the end here so you guys can check out how it is on the inside uh, and then on the blade here we are looking at s35 VN blade steel uh, this thing is riding on uh, ceramic bearings they're caged bearings it's got a ceramic uh, detent ball and <clears throat> it does also have a milled titanium pocket clip which is uh, kind of a nice feature and this one here is uh, obviously this uh, kind of goldish bronze color and this knife does come in a few different variants. Uh, this one here happens to be the uh, uh, A model, um, and they also make it in a B and a C. And so the other two are a gray micarta handle scales, uh, and they come with a, a kind of a grayish, like a flat gray colored pocket clip. And then they do have one that's a full satin blade, and they also have one that is... Uh, satin up here on the flats and then has the same black coating on the grind so so you, if you can imagine just the opposite of this blade here but blade shape is the same on all three variants and <clears throat> you can see here we are dealing with uh, T8 pivot screw and T6 body screws and clip screws you do have that pretty generous lanyard hole and then you do have just a decorative pivot on the show side, that triangle. So the pocket clip is not reversible. Um, but yeah, so liner lock, flipper tab, S35VN, and you can see this thing action is uh, really, really good. And it just drops shut. So those of you that like really, really good action, uh, this uh, certainly has it so you know this is definitely a full-size knife uh, with really great action and you know this thing comes in <clears throat> uh, you can pick this guy up at White Mountain Knives uh, is really I think the only US retailer that I've seen uh, there might be some more I'm not sure but uh, you can pick this up from from White Mountain Knives uh, for $117.55 for all three color variations. And, you know, for for micarta, S35VN, ceramic uh, bearings and detent, milled titanium clip, you know, you're not doing too bad there. $117. And then, you know, White Mountain Knives offers the discount codes with, you know, LTK and a few different people out there. So, so you can get 10% uh, off that and they ship for free. So, you know, you can get pick this guy up for, you know, just over a hundred bucks. And, you know, when you compare that to, to what else is out there on the market in that hundred dollar range, uh, man, you know, this thing's really, really doing well, especially when you figure in the materials that you're getting here. So uh, fit and finish is, is pretty good. Um, there are, there are a couple little nitpicks I have, which I'll show you on the disassembly, but uh, you can see here on the handle scales, it's kind of hard to tell. I don't know if I can get it in this orientation here, but there is a kind of a, a, a groove that runs around the handle scales, um, and you can see it runs down this side here, and it stops uh, right before the end of the knife, or you know, right before, I guess, the backspacer there. And then, and then you've got just a rounded, really nice rounded corner that runs all around the butt side of the knife. And then also on the, on the underneath side, that chamfer, or that kind of groove, uh, stops about right here, but it runs all the way to the front of the knife. So, you know, it adds a little bit of visual interest, um, and kind of breaks it up a little bit. The laminated flax is kind of interesting. Like I said, it... 
you can hear that there is some texture there uh, but it's really nice and smooth uh, you know works just like micarta where when you initially feel it it feels kind of smooth and slick but when you you know put some pressure on it it really locks your hand in well other than that there's uh, <clears throat> no jimping to speak of on the handle uh, with the exception of just very slightly uh, just some you know really kind of some relief cuts on the the lock bar there um, you do have some very slight jimping on the flipper tab uh, which I'll close this guy and you can see it better there so you do have some jimping here <clears throat> and then you also have some jimping on the top of the blade uh, but none of this is sharp it's really really well rounded you can kind of see the the chamfering on, that's on the edge of the blade here uh, you know there are no squared edges at all uh, so this thing's done really nice you can see the liners here are really well chamfered um, you know not no complaints there it's it's really nicely done you can see that lock bar relief cut there you know just really really well done every every single edge on this knife is softened and you know making the only sharp point the actual part that you want sharp but one of the details that I really like on this knife you can see that the liners are rounded the inside edge of the liners are rounded the outsides are not so they match up with the scales really nicely but as you can see that little chamfer that rounding actually stops right there where it meets up with the back spacer and that's just a really nice touch uh, you know they did that really really well and so you end up with a really nice flush uh, area back here between the liners and the backspacer. Um, the backspacer appears to be kind of like some type of G10 material. I don't know, it's kind of got a grain to it, but uh, yeah, it's really nicely done. I really like the fact that they stopped that chamfer there so you don't end up with a little groove that you know can just build up with pocket crud and whatnot. So, so that's really nice. <clears throat> Lock up on this guy is pretty early um, hasn't been an issue uh, but uh, I've been carrying this guy for a couple of weeks now and it's kind of hard to see here but you know I'm gonna say it's uh, 10 or 15 percent max uh, now it has not been an issue at all however um, I haven't uh, I haven't necessarily been super super comfortable with that either um, I have spine whacked it multiple times and it doesn't seem to be an issue I haven't had it, the lock uh, fail or anything but it is pretty early so just keep that in mind I suppose uh, but it's nothing that a little bit of filing wouldn't take care of you know I could certainly uh, do a little filing and get that thing right where I'd feel a little better about it so anyway, um, on the, uh, I guess one dimension I didn't give you was the blade stock thickness. So here we're dealing with uh, three and a half millimeter or, or, or 137 thousandths uh, blade stock. And you know, it's, uh, I think it's appropriate blade stock for the size of knife that we're talking about here. Uh, <clears throat> you know, it comes down to a really nice edge. Like I said, it's uh, a little thinner than most of your spider coast stuff behind the edge and you know it's just it's it's done well um, so you know I like the profile on this knife it's uh, I think a pretty good looking piece especially for right around that hundred dollar uh, mark so so yeah well let's uh, get into the disassembly here real quick so like I said this guy is uh, uh, T8 or uh, T8 on the pivot screw and then uh, T6s on the body screws. So, and none of this hardware was uh, Loctited from the factory, which is always a, a nice thing. And that's always a pain in the ass when everything is locked up. And, you know, I like to keep my tools in good working order. And, and uh, you know, I will put Loctite on stuff that requires it, but if it doesn't uh, require it and doesn't end up uh, Backing off and loosening up over time then you know I'd, I'd rather not put Loctite on them if I don't have to 
So, let's see here. Let me pop this guy off of here. There we go. All right. So you can see here, um, one of the things, eh, I did put a little marker on that uh, lock bar face just because there was a little bit of lock stick, but you can see they've done some pretty serious weight relieving uh, on the liners here. And one of the things I thought was fairly interesting was is that, you know, that seems like they skipped the hole right here. Uh, but the balance on this knife is extremely good. Um, it's balanced. I didn't show that off, but it's it's really well balanced. Um, so you can see here, you've got your uh, ceramic detent ball there, <clears throat> and you've got a little relief area where the bearings ride. Uh, but otherwise, you know, pretty standard uh, kind of stainless steel liner affair. And then you've got uh, on the blade here, you've got the... Uh, brass caged uh, ceramic bearings and you can see the detent uh, hole there and now this knife does not have a detent ramp which it could definitely use um, that would be another thing that I would do and so that's certainly something that I would like to see but you know it is what it is so <clears throat> all right and then here on the other side, you can see lots of weight relieving. Lots of weight relieving. You can see here kind of the grain on that uh, backspacer, you know, it appears to be G10. So, <clears throat> you know, just really well done. There's your blade stop. Uh, one of the things I did want to mention, though, is on this pivot. So, as you can see here, there is a flat on the pivot right there. It is a D-shaped pivot, which is always a great thing. However, in order for that to be a fantastic thing, <clears throat> you need to have a D-shaped hole. And although this one does have slightly D-shaped hole, and it does keep it from spinning and rotating, but let me tell you guys, it is barely D-shaped. I don't know if I'll be able to, if the light will really do it justice, but man, it is, I mean, like I said, it does work, but just barely, and it's really kind of a joke, honestly. So, there's your uh, ceramic bearings, like I said, little brass cages, pretty standard. Um, this knife does have uh, really small balls. In comparison, to, <laughs> in comparison to most knives, uh, the bearing size here is very small. Um, so hopefully it's not self-conscious, but uh, yeah, just something I noticed, small balls. So maybe that's uh, typical with pelicans, I'm not really sure. So anyway, <clears throat> maybe someone out there can, can tell me that knows more about... Uh, about pelicans. Uh, what did I do with my? Oh, there it is. All right. Put the blade stop back in here. <clears throat> so this thing is relatively easy, as you can see, to to uh, take apart and get that over the pivot there. Perfect. So. Uh, yeah, really, you know, the, my only complaints really um, with this guy are the 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 detent uh, ramp not being there. Like I said, it certainly could could benefit from having a detent uh, ball ramp. And then the other thing that uh, pivot not fully having a D shape in the liner, which you know, I mean that's. I'm kind of nitpicking there, but it's it's a thing. Uh, you know, it's it's so it barely catches. You know, so it it does function, but it's uh, it's not the the nicest uh, liners I've ever seen. That's for sure. It's got no blade play. Yeah, it's tight. So let me back that off just a little bit. Now, the other thing I wanted to say here 
is the, uh, yeah, there we go. Uh, you know, this thing is a flipper and that's fine. And, you know, I think there is a little bit of flipper fatigue going on these days. We just all have had so many flippers and there's so many of them out there. But this knife, uh, honestly, I think it would uh, lend itself pretty good to a, to a thumb stud knife. Um, you know, I would kind of like to see this blade shape and stuff. Uh, I think it would work well with a thumb stud. You know, it's a... I think it's a, a pretty good looking piece. Um, <clears throat> it's really ergonomic in the hand. You know, it's a fairly neutral handle. It doesn't have a whole bunch of finger grooves and stuff. It does kind of swell up here at the back. Um, <clears throat> handle thickness on this guy, you're looking at just right around a half inch. So, you know, it's pretty standard in that way. And the micarta works well. You know, I've got pretty pretty big extra large hands here, but but it does, you know, fit the hand well. It, it, it fills the hand because of these uh, contoured my, micarta scales. And it locks in well. It, you know, got good traction. <clears throat> the jimping up here is useful um, uh, if you really bear down on it. But it is nicely contoured and smooth. So, you know, there's there are really no hot spots on this at all. The pocket clip kind of melts into your hand. It's It's well done for a titanium clip certainly makes the knife look pretty nice and you know it's got quite a bit of ramp it's got good spring tension um and you know for a titanium milled clip it, it goes in and out of the pocket extremely well so i'm pretty happy with that uh, like i said i have carried this quite a bit you can kind of see the the patina on it already i mean it's only been a few weeks but it's also been you know during the 9500 degree weather that we've had in the midwest so you know chances are i was uh sweating a bunch while I was carrying this thing but you know blade centering's always been good <clears throat> uh, no blade play no lock rock no that sort of thing so you know I feel like it's well done um for a hundred dollars I think it's a pretty compelling piece um yeah compared to what else you're getting you know to touch anything with S35 VN you're generally significantly over that hundred dollar mark and you know I feel like for my carta and uh yeah it's it's done well i think it's a good piece if you like my carta and you like full-size knives then i'd say it's pretty compelling i think it's uh definitely worth the money and and maybe it's worth uh you giving it a look so anyway guys uh, qsp knives uh you can pick them up white mountain knives this one here is the pelican and uh yeah have a good night thanks